assuming because we see our friends on Jamie that I can go. And so many, um, such, such deep gratitude to you, Jan, for leading and to you, Diana, for like rallying the troops for um, this Minion Morning. It's so wonderful to see everyone. If you um, tuned into our annual meeting uh, earlier, this week, I, I confess something publicly, which is that I awaken in the morning and I find saying the words, Moda ani lefanecha, uh, I thank you, God, helps me begin the day with a sense of gratitude. So that's what we're going to open up with on page 68. Um, my voice isn't quite warmed up, so let's all warm up together. <laughs> No dani lefanecha, melecha vikayam, sheha zarta be nishmati vehem la vehem la raba emunatecha. And so welcome. I, um, I'm thinking it's we're a small enough group that it would be just nice to know among whom we pray. Why not? Uh, um, why not share one thing you love about spring? We'll make it an easy one. So, uh, so I'm Ruth, and I love sunlight. <laughs> oh. Yes, I'm, I'm Ruth, and I use she, her pronouns, and I like light. Um, I'm Shelly. Hi, folks at home. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and uh, we just got the first strawberries out of our yard this morning, so yay. Toby, and she, her, and I love flowers. Frida Taub and spring flowers. I, I'm Carl. We, we all love the blossoming in spring and, and then, of course, spring fever and memories of youth. Why is it that every time Carl speaks, a poem comes out? <laughs> that was so lovely. Hi, I'm Allison. My pronouns are they, them. And I like uh, the, early, the earlier mornings um, when it's cooler and it's not hot. Uh, I'm Nix, my pronouns are he, him, and I like that school's ending soon. I'm Theo, or Wolf today, um, my pronouns are he, him, and I like that when I wake up, the, it's light already, so I, it feels like morning. Yeah, 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 <laughs> not like you woke up. I, I'm all about the spring flowers, I'm Carol, she, her, and but so I'll go with um, paddleboarding weather. Stand up paddleboarding is here. I'm I'm Jonah. He him and I uh, enjoy the morning light. Uh, I'm Jeremiah and I like the return of butterflies in the spring. <laughs> that was a crowd pleaser, Jeremiah. I'm Dana Benson. I use they, she pronouns, and I love the smell of dew in the morning on the plants. Oh, yeah, I'm Jan Blower Chima, she, her. Um, I like the fluffy green lawn. Oh, <laughs> and then maybe I'll just call on our friends and Diana, since you have your camera on. Um, Diana Bremen, she, her pronouns and all of the above, <laughs> except for the school, except for the school part. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, anyone else on line oh, willing uh, to share? You don't even have to turn your camera on. Oh, but Jim, yeah, go for it, Jim. Uh, I think cherry blossoms. Awesome. And uh, John and Cheryl or Sharon, would any of you like to share what you like about spring? 
Well, if you change your mind, just drop it in the chat and uh, we'll <laughs> learn more about that then. Um, and so we're here on this Shabbat morning. We know among whom we sit. We know that because it's Parshat Naso, uh, we are in the Book of Numbers, which means we are in um, late spring or early summer, depending on where the lunar calendar falls. And it does happen to be the perfect Torah portion for this week. Uh, um, uh, it, it allows us actually, it is in the Book of Numbers, where, um, which is such a hodgepodge, but it talks about the journey through the wilderness. And it does have the story of someone who was to look at like this sort of ragtag group of people and was supposed to curse them, but instead said, Matovu o halacha Yaakov, how beautiful are your tents, O Jacob. And so we're gonna sing that knowing that we are in a beautiful tent of community now. Matovu is on page 74. And let's sing the first two verses. And the third verse, we will read together in English, which would be the last two English um, translations on page 74. So together we'll do Matovu. Matovu, O Allah Yaakov, Mishkinu Techa Israel, Matovu, Matovu, O Allah Yaakov, Mishkinu Techa Israel, Bani Bero Pasecha, Abo Vetecha. Together in English, as for me, may my prayer come to you, Adonai, at a favorable time. O oh God, in your abundant faithfulness, answer me with your sure deliverance. And um, uh, these last words that we just read together, I love a more literal translation of the Hebrew. Um, the Hebrew is, Ba'ani tefilati lecha Adonai. Ani, I am tefilati my prayer, lacha, to you. And so uh, we in our very beings are our prayers that we offer up to the one who created us all. And we're so grateful to Carl who lead us in, a, um, uh, in two blessings that speak about being the prayer that we want to offer in the world, the prayer of our bodies and the prayer of our souls. Carl is gonna be reading I have somewhere beginning on page 76. So this is page 77. Um, when, we, when we consider our bodies, our bodies that anchor us in the world, center us in the world, when we sense the inner structures, the genes, the cells, the bones, muscles, arteries, veins, organs, everything working together, when we sense that existentially, what it takes, what it takes to keep us in the world, rooted in the world like this, we are amazed. Until the end of the 19th century, 
Most people thought that the complexity of the body was in itself proof that God exists. And it's not as if the body has turned out to be less complicated than people thought back then. It's more complicated, more wonderful by far. So let's read together. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of the universe. With divine wisdom you have made our bodies, combining veins, arteries, and vital organs into a finely balanced network, wondrous maker and sustainer of life. Were one of them to fail, how well we are aware you would lack the strength to stand before you. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of our health and strength. But, but here's the problem. When the soul is drawn into the body, when it identifies with this bit, this tiny bit of space and time, things do start to go wrong. Lust, greed, pain, dread, betrayal. God breathes the soul into us and as our breath enters and departs, the soul enters and departs. And this entering and departing is the rhythm of the universe. But the soul as it enters us is pure. We affirm this. The soul God has given us is pure. Does it stay pure? Well, you know, purity was not actually God's only aim in creating the universe. There was also freedom and creativity, all that begetting, spiritual and physical. They matter too. They matter more, whatever they cost us, whatever they cost God. The Torah teaches that clearly. So let's read on page, on page 78. My God, the soul you have given me is pure. You created it, you shaped it, you breathed it into me, and you protect it within me. For as long as my soul is within me, I offer thanks to you, Adonai, my God, and God of my ancestors, source of all creation, sovereign of all souls. Praised are you, Adonai, in whose hand is every living soul on the breath of humankind. So beautiful. And now we can take the totality of ourselves and offer up uh, the beginning of our 100 blessings that we offer each day. Thank you to Allison um, for leading us. Page 80. I think Jamie has kindly agreed to put the uh, non-binary translation uh, on the screen. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. And uh, this is a translation I believe that Shelley did for us from the Non-Binary Hebrew Project. Uh, the, there's of course a uh, traditional masculine version in the prayer books. Please follow along with uh, that or any other gendered language or English or Hebrew as best suits you for today. Bruhe a te havea shechinu ruach haolam. I've given the mind the ability to distinguish day from night. Bruhe a te havea shechinu ruach haolam. Bokehe ivrim. Bruhe a te havea shechinu ruach haolam. Matire asurim. Bruhe a te havea shechinu ruach haolam zoke fe fe fufim. Bruhe a te havea shechinu ruach haolam roke haaretz al hamayim. 
Who gives strength to the weary? Remove sleep from the eyes and slumber from the eyelids. Israel <laughs> And in the tradition here at Temple Beth Am, we'll begin with the same opening as you have before and conclude with whatever prayer you need for today. Who is us many languages to speak with God? Um, yeah, uh, so moving on in the service to page 100, we are doing the songs of praise and uh, the hallelujah song or Psalm 150. Uh, there's so many versions of it and one, one of my favorites is the Sufi version and Rabbi Dan is going to help us with that because I only know the chorus. So, we all learn, we all learn together. Great. so we can start by doing the chorus and then we'll segue into Rabbi Dana's. So uh, it's the last, um, I think it's the last lines of the psalm. It goes, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Up to the top. Shema, te hallelujah, 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 now to the top. Hallelujah, el becocho, hallelujah, brikia uzo, hallelujah. If you need to, Hallelujah, 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 Betsil to later. 
Thank you all. That's your cloth. Please turn to page 106. And we are going to do the Hetzikadish for a transition into the main part of the service. Yitkada v'yitkada shemerava ve'alma dira hirte v'yam lich malhute Bechaye chon uvio me chon uvechaye de kol beit Yisrael bagal of his man karif vemaru amen yehesh me rava mavorach lealam alal me amaya yitbarach viyistabach viyitbar. Amen. <laughs> So if you are able to rise in body, or if you are not, rise in spirit and join for the barhu. <laughs> On page 108. <laughs> Ya <laughs> Adonai, ha-mevorach, ha-mevorach, le-olam va-et. Ha-mevorach, ha-mevorach, le-olam va-et. Um, please. Be seated, and Allison, you like to come and lead in the Yotzer Or, which can be found on page 110. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Yotzer Or Uvore Choshech, Ose shalom uvare et hakol. Hameir la aretz veladarim aleha berachamim. Uv tuvo mechadesh bechol yom tamid maase vereshit. Ma rabu maasecha adonai, kulam bechokma asita, mal aha aretz kinya necha. Tit barach adonai elohenu, al shevach maase yadecha. The al meore or she asita yafa ruha sela. Or hadash al zion tair, veniske hulanu mehera le oro. Baruchata arunai, yotzer ham orot. Continuing, continuing on page one twelve. 
together the Ahava Rabbah. I'll try to go a little higher because I'm going into the basement too low. Ahava Rabbah of Tahanu Adonai Eloheinu Chemla Gedola Vitera Chamalta Aleinu Babura Botenu Bei Motenu Shebatu Vecha Shebatu Vecha Avotenu Bei Motenu Vatalem Dem Huke Chaim Kente Chanenu Tlam Denu Rachem Aleinu Veten Bilibenu Lehavin Lehavinu Haskil Lishmo Ilmodu Lelamed Lishmor Velasot Ulkayemet Koldi Re Tomutora Techabiahava Baha Erenenu Betora Techa Beda Beglebenu Bemitzvo Techa Beyachel Leva Venu Leahava Uira Echemecha Velo Nebush Velo Shehem Kochecha Hagadovahan or Rabatachnu Nagila Venis Mechaha Nagila Venis Mechabi Shuatecha Behavi Enu Lesha Lesher Bakan Fodle Aret the Toli Hainu, come and me youth, come and me youth, let Ki Elba, you should ta, Uma, the heart of the care of Tanu, the Shimha Gado. Sela Sela Behemet Lehodot Lecha Uya Hedcha Uya Hedcha Beahava Baruch Adonai Abocher Bemo Yisrael Beahava <coughs> Um, now rise, please, if you are able, if you're not, rise in spirit to sing our watchword of our people, the Shema. Baruch Adonai, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Shem Kevod, Shem Kevod, Malchuto, Le'olam Va'ed. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. 
Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Allison, come on up and lead, please lead us in the Vehakta. Thank you. Uh, page 116. <laughs> Asher anochi himet savecha Hayom al levavecha Veshinam tam levanecha Veribalar talam Meshivtecha bevetecha Ulechtecha avaterech Ushoch becha uvikonecha Upsharzam leo tal yadecha Vehayumet otefot veinecha Uchtatam al mezuzot vetecha Uvishalrecha Leman tinskeru Vasitem et kol mitzvotai Vihisem geroshim lelohechem Ani Adonai lohechem Asher holseiti etchem Meheretz mitzrayim Lihiot lachem lelohim Ani Adonai lohechem and so we transition to the words and melodies of Micha Mocha, our prayer for freedom, our song of courage, our song of going on the journey. We'll be joined by our wonderful choir and musicians uh, for this rendition of Micha Mocha. Uh, if you want to dance, we can dance. So that's up to you. If you're at home, go for it. Um, I'll probably be grooving right here because that's how I tend to do. But we liven our spirits. We liven our hearts as we move more and more into the heart of our prayers with Micha Mocha. You can join with us on page 122. Micha Mocha, a little bit stingy from clapping so much and our hearts full with energy we stand if in body or spirit as we move into the Amidah it's my honor and pleasure to invite up Jonah who's going to be coming 
bar mitzvah in just a couple weeks, who's going to help me out with leading the Amidah today. You ready, Jonah? Do you want to do that opening line for us? That Adonai Sefatai? Yeah. Awesome. You can join with both Jonah and I on page 124. 124. Beautiful. Thank you. Adonai Sefatai Tiftach Uviyagita Hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that our mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu, velohe avotenu, vimotenu. Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, velohe Yaakov. Elohe Shara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, velohe Leah. Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Mahanora. El El Yom, Gomel Chasadim Tovim. Vekone hakol, vizoher chase avot v'imahot, umevi gula libe v'nehem, leman shemo be'ahava, melech ozer umashia umagen, baruch atah Adonai, magen avraham ve'ezrat sarah, Atagi bor leolam Adonai, mechaye hakol atarab lechashia, morid hatal, mechakel chayim bechesed, mechaye hakol berachamim rabim, shomech noflim berofecholim, Umatir asurim, umekayem emenato, lishene afar, michamocha baal gevurot, umido melach, melech memid umekayem, Umat miach Yeshua, mineeman atah lechayel takol, baruch atah Adonai, mechayel takol. Yasher koach, you can stay up here or you can go back to your seat if you'd like. We're going to continue on page 130 with the Kedusha, and then if you want to stay up, you can help us with Kedusha Hayam with Elohim. I'm good. You're good. <laughs> But he did a wonderful job, so thank you, Jonah. If you, Yasher Koch, if you want to hear him teach some Torah in just a couple weeks, I invite you to do so. It's going to be a lovely, lovely Shabbat. Page 130, we are sanctified by our students and we are sanctified by each other. Vekara ze el ze ve amar Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh Adonai tsevahot Meloch ol haaretz Kevodo Adir, adirenu Adonai, Adonenu Adir shimcha bechol haaretz Baruch kevod Adonai mimkomo Echad hu Eloheinu Hu avinu hu malkeinu Hu moshiheinu vehu yashmiheinu Verachamav reine kolachai, ahani adonai lohechem, nimloch adonai leolam, elohai ichzion, ledor hador, alleluia. Le dorva dor nagid god lecha, ule 
Nitzach Nitzach im Kedushat Chanak Tish. Rishiv Hacha Eloheinu Mipinu Lo Yamush Leolam Vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Ha'el HaKadosh. And we continue with 134, our prayer of sanctifying the special day of Shabbat. Eloheinu ve'elohe avoteinu ve'imoteinu Retzevim nuchateinu Tad sheinu v'mitzvotecha V'ten helkeinu v'toratecha Sabeinu mituvecha V'samcheinu v'shuatecha V'taher liveinu Le'avdecha v'emet v'anchil le'enu Adonai Eloheinu v'ahava u'v'ratzon Shavad kodshecha v'anu v'ayisrael over the next few pages, I invite you to either use the words that are on the page or the meditations of your own heart as we continue in this time of silent, personal meaningful prayer. We'll join back together in a few moments on page 142. Mm-hmm. 
speak from this podium i've never spoken oh here sorry oh no 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 we're good we're good i can this is you know part I'm, I'm bipodial so. <laughs> um more on that uh <laughs> at the kiddish lunch um but uh, anyway i've just been i was saying uh to allison it's just been so lovely i I, I'm just so grateful to be praying in person and uh, but with friends who are virtual as well uh, that I, I lost my short term memory for a while. So we're um, about to go to into the Seder Kriyata Torah, the service for reading Torah. And um, if I invited you to hold the Torah, please join us. Um, and I'm also going to invite Allison as well. And um, uh, and uh, the this week's Torah portion is actually different for us in the reform movement and most reconstructionist um, uh, places as well as in the land of Israel because we only celebrate one day of Shavuot and so we in our reform movement are um, reading Parshat Naso Echad <laughs> and next week we'll read uh, which means uh, the Naso one. Naso is usually just, it's been divided into two parts for this week. And as I mentioned, this is, um, we're well into the way of numbers. And it's about um, what do we do when we travel with a Torah in our midst? Um, yesterday was Shavuot, we received Torah. Today is Shabbat. And so we're going to bring Torah to you. The service for reading Torah begins on page 244 and i'll invite um allison and if i invited someone else to hold the torah toby and and uh ronnie you're later on great please rise and body your spirit In Kamocha Vailohi Madonai, Malchutcha Malchut Kololamim, Umem Shaltecha Becholdor Vador. Stand here again on Mount Sinai, again receiving Torah, again getting to interpret it anew, and again bringing it out into the people. 
The Torah has been handed down generation to generation, Lador Vador, to the great assembly, to the wise individuals of our times before us, to our ancestors, to our generations past, and now to us sitting here today. We sing and rejoice together as we bring Torah into our midst. <laughs> Please be seated. And um, if you were here yesterday for our Shavuot service, I'm going to tell you this now, Rabbi Dana. Great. Yirmiyahu ben Shmuel ben Rivka. Yirmiyahu ben Shmuel ben Rivka. I'm sorry, Shelley. We had a little uh, <laughs> a, a, a short-term memory loss yesterday, too, with uh, Shelley's uh, Hebrew name. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to set the stage. Uh, thank, we're grateful to Rabbi Dana for uh, reading um, a few words from the beginning of our Torah portion. As I mentioned, this is an incredible hodgepodge of a, a Torah portion. Um, I, Carl is going to share one of the more challenging parts of this. Uh, we have uh, the story of the Nazir. I'm going to tell you the page in just a moment, Toby. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and we also have um, the priestly benediction. So it is just so filled. Um, but I will say I have a little special place in my heart. Um, uh, as some of you know, when I went to rabbinical school, I was not intending to be a congregational rabbi. And instead, what I did um, uh, is I, I was, we had to have an internship in congregational life. And instead of doing it throughout the year, I lived for a month at a congregation in Connecticut. 
and served as their rabbinic intern. And my very first Devar Torah for that community was on this Torah portion. Um, and I, in fact, have the notes still here. Um, and so, but uh, uh, what I love about that is um, I spent four weeks with the community, fell in love with them, was their rabbinic intern for the next four years, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, I'm a congregational rabbi. <laughs> and, and what I love about what I saw, it was at the very beginning in the verses that um, uh, Rabbi Dana is about to chant. It talks about the role of the Gershonites and the Murrahites. I think we're only going to hear about the Gershonim um, today. But they were the ones who slept. They were part of the Levite. They were clans within the Levite tribe. Um, and they slept the, the tent of meeting through the wilderness. And some of them held all of the textiles and diaphanous stuff, and others held like the rods and the heavy stuff. And I, I in all my wisdom, <laughs> all those years ago, I recognized even then how important it, like each of us, and I've been feeling it this morning in this minion, part of what makes a sacred community is we each know what we need to carry every person whether it's the diaphanous aesthetics or it's the justice work or it's um, uh, serving on the board for a second rodeo, whatever it might be, uh, I, we couldn't do it without each of us doing the work. So it is an honor to invite Rabbi Dana and um, Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah will do the blessing. That was me. I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, I'm do. Yeah, we are who bench for better if God let Alia still reach on us. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach leolam vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach leolam vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bakar Banu Mikol Haamim Venatan Lanu et Torato. Baruch atah Adonai noten ha-Torah. Amen. Zot avodat mishpachot ha-gershunim le'avod ul-ma'aseh v'na'asu et yirat ha-mishkan v'et ohel mo'er mach-sehu Umechase Hatachash Asher Alav Milmalan Ve et Masef Poet et Masaf Petach Ohel Moed Petach Ohel Moed Ve et Koleha Hetzar Me et Me et Masaf Patach Shaar Hachatzer Asher Asher al hamishkan Ve al hamizbeach Saviv Ve et mitrehem Ve et kol kle Avodetam Ve et kol asher Yase lahem Ve et kol asher Yase lahem leavadav Thanks for that. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu Torah temet v'chaye olam nata betochenu Baruch atah Adonai noten ha-Torah Amen Asher Koach And so I, the reason I chose those few verses Rabbi Ruth was asking me is because I really love kind of some of the interesting items that become part of this porterage of the Gershonites. And specifically, we don't talk about the Gershonites all that much, honestly, but we have dolphin skin in this part of the Torah portion. I know, like literally that, I, I don't think that's a great translation, but I have no idea what else it would be. Um, tachash, which is such a weird word anyhow. And so it's always just kind of been uh, an interesting thought process for me to think why these items, what was being traded around the area at the time, and what alchemical properties did our ancestors potentially believe were part of how all of these items came together with their own spiritual energy and the energies of the community? Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with the Torah open before us, we take a moment to share prayers of healing. Um, I'll begin with uh, 
folks online. Um, I, I thanks for the thumbs up. And Diana, we uh, do you. We would invite you to share names of people that you'd like to include in our prayer for healing. If you don't want to say it out loud, you can just put them in chat. Diana. Oh, terrific. And does anyone here want? everyone we've named out loud and anyone we hold in our hearts we continue with our prayer for healing and what's her name Maureen? Shavuot I did a version of Elna Rafanala and I want to take a moment to teach you a different version um, Elna Rafanala being as I think as you mentioned yesterday the one of the oldest prayers of healing coming straight out of the Torah Moses's words when he was trying to ask for healing for Miriam so I'll teach you the melody and hopefully we'll just sing it a few times through together El Narfanala. Try that. El Narfanala. El Narfanala. El Narfanala. El Narfanala. El Narfanala. Two different words. Refu Ashlema Refu Ashlema All together it sounds like this and whenever you feel comfortable join in El Narfana Allah El Narfana Allah El Narfana Allah Refu Ashlema El na refana la, el na refana la, el na refana la, refu ashlema, el na refana la, el na refana la. El na refana la refu hashlema. El na refana la. El na refana la. El na refana la refu hashlema. And we wish each and every one of them that we named out loud, put in the chat, or hold in our hearts a refuah shalema, a full and speedy healing. Time to lift and dress Torah. I invite uh, Toby and Ronnie, and Ronnie and Toby, <laughs> as I invite all of you to please rise in body or spirit. Uh, and the blessings are on page 252. Yeah, I'm do. How much beer we have going? Let's. We sort a Torah, a share some Moshe, leave nave in Israel, I'll be a donai, we had Moshe. Yay, die, 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 So please be seated. I think we're going to do the Haftorah next. And so it's an honor to invite Shelly forward, who uh, will be doing the blessings and uh, some part of the readings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> uh, I, you know, you come up here because these are our sacred texts. These are what connects us to generations past and yet to be. So we might as well be high up. And uh, uh, the, um, the reform movement for the Haftarah, the additional readings, um, in its um, 
in incredible wisdom has also divided this. I'm not sure which part of the Samson story uh, Shelley will be reading, but I will say in this incredible hodgepodge of a Torah portion, my particular favorite I've always been fascinated is with um, the Nazarites who uh, dedicated themselves to God. We'll talk about that another time, another place, but um, Samson of the long hair fame the Nazarites weren't supposed to cut their hair, and um, that's where he found his strength until he met a femme fatale. <laughs> yeah. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Bin Vim Tovim Gratzav Adivrehem Hanemarim Be'emet Baruch Atah Adonai Abocher Batorah Uv Moshe Avdo, Uv Israel Amo, Uv in Vie Hayamet Batzedek. There was a man named Manoach from Zorah. He was of the Danite clan, and his wife was barren, never having given birth. One day, an angel of the Eternal appeared to the woman and said to her, Yes, you are barren and unable till now to have children, but you shall be pregnant and give birth to a son. Take care not to drink wine or beer or eat anything impure, for you shall soon be pregnant and give birth to a boy. His hair is never to be cut because from the womb he is God's Nazarite. He will begin to liberate Israel from the hand of the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, a man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God, very frightening. I didn't ask him where he had come from, and he didn't tell me his name. All he said to me was this, you shall soon be pregnant and give birth to a boy. You are not to drink wine or beer, nor eat impure food, because the boy shall be God's Nazarite from the womb to the day of his death. Manoach then turned to the Eternal in prayer, saying, Eternal One, please let your messenger return to us and teach us how to bring up our child. God listened to Manoach's prayer, and the angel of God returned to the woman as she was sitting in the field. And again, her husband Manoach was not there. The woman ran quickly and told her husband, the man who came here that day has shown up again. So Manoach followed his wife and came to the man saying to him, are you the man who spoke to my wife? Yes, I am, he answered. May your words come true, said Manoach. What do you prescribe for the boy? What is he to do? The angel of the eternal said to Manoach, your wife must do exactly as I instructed her. She must eat nothing that comes from a grapevine. She must not drink wine or beer. She must eat nothing impure. Let her do exactly as I instructed her. In time, the woman gave birth to a child. She called him Samson. The boy grew up with the blessing of the Eternal. The spirit of the Eternal first began to move him in the encampment of Dan between Zorach and Eshtaol. Baruch Ataronai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Tzur Kol Haolamim Tzadik Bechol Hadorot Ha'el Hanemon Ha'omer Ve'oseh Hamdaber Umekayim Shekol Devarav Emet Vatzedek Al HaTorah Ve'al HaVodah Ve'al Hanevim Ve'al Yom HaShabbat Hazeh Shenatatalanu Adonai Eloheinu Likdishav Limucha Lechavod Ultifavet Al Hakol Adonai Eloheinu Anachnu Modim Lach Umvarchim Otach Yitbarach Shimcha Befiko Chai Tamid Leolam Vaed Baruch Adonai Mekadesh HaShabbat Thank you. Uh, I, I was telling Ruth, Rabbi Ruth, this is uh, one of my favorite Haftar wrote just because, and you can hear more of it next week, um, but we have an, un, an unnamed woman who is Manoach's wife, who is the one who's getting all the instructions for everything, and Manoach keeps being like, huh? What's happening? <laughs> um, but it's just like a, a beautiful, very interesting comedic moment of our, of our yeah. tale. 
Um, and so we'll return Tora to the ARC, uh, the blessing. Oh, I think the choir is going to be helping us with this. Uh, they'll be singing from page 256, Please Rise in Body or Spirit. heard me say about this week's Torah portion <laughs> because now Carl is going to come forward and, and truly enlighten us uh, with a Devar Torah. Thank you so much, Carl. You know, I really should have decided to talk about the, uh, the, the Levites and the objects they carry and the interplay of holiness among those objects. I've been, I'd, I'd have been a lot safer, but, but uh, here, here I am. Um, when, when God gave Israel the Torah, it was like a marriage rite, we were, we were saying, between God and Israel. And I, I believe that because I believe that the greatest words and images that enter our minds bind heaven and earth together, and they disclose a path for all of us. And if you're celebrating Shavuot, you, you still feel that revelation in the air. But, but getting back to love and marriage, both individual and cosmic, they offer the hope of fruitfulness, of fruitfulness. But there is also, unfortunately, the risk of betrayal and jealousy. And that brings us to a page of today's Torah reading. It's the portion called uh, Naso, which means count, making a count. But unfortunately for my poor self, um, our custom, is, as, as, as both our rabbis have been saying, um, in order to stay in sync with our orthodox friends, we just read the first half of the portion this week and save the second half, which has the best three lines. I mean, maybe the best three lines in all Torah, maybe the best three lines in all literature, but it's, we're putting it off till next week. Um, although I am going to uh, close with those lines uh, because I just can't wait for them. <laughs> but, but the page in this week's reading that uh, I suppose it most compels uh, commentary because it's so troubling, it's, it's about those jealousies and betrayals that threaten everyone capable of love, that threaten every soul, every soul breathed into a body and vulnerable, vulnerable in that body. That's what happens when we get breathed into bodies, we become vulnerable. So jealousy and betrayal, it, 
it sometimes happens that a man, and in ancient patriarchal Israel, it's always assumed to be a man. It sometimes happened that a man got the idea his wife had betrayed him. His love was stained. His world was threatened. And he also felt that ancient horror about, you know, adulteration of his bloodline because he was driven by a need to implant his genes as his evolution, as our evolutionary biologists, whose emphasis sometimes worries me, in fact, worries me a lot, like to, to put it. If, if you're an evolutionary biologist, people worry about my field too. So don't, don't be angry. In, in any case, here is a man who is jealous of his wife, and he gets, Torah says, a ruach kina, a jealous spirit, or fits of jealousy. But there's no proof, there's no proof his wife has betrayed him, and indeed she protests her innocence. The man's jealousy grows. His wife's protests become more desperate. See, there is a need for truth. There are times when we thirst for truth. We can't always be post-truth. There are times when only truth or trust in another person's truth will bring peace, restore love, heal wounds. The wife protests her innocence repeatedly, but she could be lying. What evidence, what witness? could guarantee that such a thing didn't happen, happen in darkness, total secrecy. Certainty is hard. Well, Torah suggests, it's, it's terrifying, but Torah suggests that in such a case, the couple will have to ask God for a sign. Only God can reveal the truth, and God will reveal the truth. So the wife drinks a magical potion, mixed with bits of sacred soil and holy water and with the ink from, from the inscription of great and mysterious curses that include God's holy name, she drinks, having sworn her innocence, and she prays to be horribly disfigured and tormented if she's lying. But, she's but, if, but if she's telling the truth, all will be well. We're not going to say any more about this ghastly ordeal, except perhaps even, you know, even uh, uh, the guilty uh, could perhaps come through it pretty well because, you know, really it was just water. And, and so it may be that uh, um, imperfect marriages were, were saved with the help of a God who sometimes winks at our indiscretions. Or, or perhaps the rites really were dangerous in a world more magic than ours. Who knows? Rabbi Yochanan ben Zahai said 2,000 years ago that the ordeal had stopped working. But the theme of jealousy remains crucial, and that's what I want to pursue. I'll turn first to the Greeks, that other source of Western civilization, and then return to Torah. My beloved Greeks were perhaps the first to describe human romantic jealousy, to describe it from inside, to find words for what it feels like. Sappho of Lesbos who was born in 650 BC, that's about the time of Jeremiah, was a poet of love and jealousy. And perhaps she understood these feelings better than anyone ever had. She was a teacher. She was attracted to other women. She fell in love with a gifted young woman, but that woman loved someone else, loved a man. Sappho gazed at the couple sitting together. They seemed almost divine. Their love made them seem almost godlike. But Sappho herself was left out in the cold, tormented and alone. 
Again, this is one of the first great love poems and a first, I'm sure, in the inner history of love and its suffering. Here is Sappho. Pure of the gods, he seems to me, the man who sits where he can look in your eyes, who listens close to you, your low laughter, all for him. But it breaks my spirit. I'm shaken. Let me just glance at the place where you are. I can't speak. Flame burns from under my skin. Nothing shows in front of my eyes anymore. My ears fill with thunder. I grow pale as grass. I lack little of dying. See, when you're head over heels in love and you see the person you love is flirting with someone else, enchanting someone else, delighted to be with someone else, your whole world ebbs away. It's as if you saw nothing at all anymore and thunder swallowed everything. It's like death, a near-death experience, Sappho says, because love, as she says, makes the beloved seem almost divine. When all is well in love, the beloved makes you feel as if you had already fulfilled your highest promise had already become what you needed to be, an image of God, an image of God, or as in the, or in the Greek sense, a peer of God, a God-like being. And since the beloved gives so much, betrayal by the beloved ruins everything, destroys everything, the loss is boundless, death or worse than death. Now, the philosopher Plato lived 200 years after Sappho, and he was a great fan of Sappho. And Plato influenced most great love songs in our tradition, if not the song of songs itself, at least all commentaries on it. And Plato wrote the world's first great philosophic account of love and jealousy. We'll get back to Torah in a moment, but here's what Plato says. Romantic love, he says, is a kind of madness, but it can be an ennobling madness. It can be ennobling because, and here Plato agrees with Sappho, because our love, if it's passionate enough, fierce enough, makes the beloved seem more than human an actual image of God, as we would say. And of course, to be worthy of your beloved, beloved and the idea your beloved has of you, to be worthy of that, you have to become nobler, braver and more generous, more like a God yourself. So love motivates great creative deeds, having children, growing prosperous, growing braver, stronger, more eloquent, growing deeper, more mystical. Every one of us is asking a question of the universe. What is it about? What is life about? And you feel closer to the answer, Plato suggests, echoing Sappho, when the beloved is by your side. But, Plato says, Besides the ennobling kind of love, there is a sinister, possessive, jealous kind of love. This is a terrible danger. If you're in love, the beloved becomes the center of your world. To possess him, and Plato uses male pronouns for both the lover and the beloved, to possess him may become an obsession. You're addicted to his company, like a like a drug addict addicted to a drug, and then love becomes destructive. You'll possess the beloved more easily if he's weak rather than strong, poor rather than rich, friendless rather than surrounded by friends. And so before long, you're destroying the person you love because he'll leave you if he's independent of you. And you start to undermine the very qualities that attracted you to him in the first place. Jealousy and possessiveness make love sinister. Instead of making the beloved more divine, a better image of God, you make him less, less than he had been. Now Sappho, 
in the generosity of her heart, could praise the couple that excluded her, could rejoice in their sacred world even when her heart was breaking, whereas Plato's sinister, raging, possessive lover, you know, the one with the male pronouns, would never be generous like that. Plato insists, however, that the difference between the noble and sinister love, between the giving love and the destructive love, cuts across all pronouns and all genders. And, and I agree. Well, thank you for indulging me in these encounters with the divine Sappho, as she's called, and the divine Plato, as he's called. And now we can return to Torah and the theme of our text, which is jealousy and possessiveness and anxiety about your bloodline. In the, in the men and women of Torah, we do see love and rivalry, but the experience of raging possessive jealousy, although it brings about the cruel ordeal in today's test, text, that experience isn't really evoked from within in Torah. We're not told what it feels like as, as we are with Sappho and Plato, except perhaps in the case of one figure in Torah, and you all know who that is. Read the Ten Commandments. I am the eternal, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not bow down to idols and worship them, for I, the eternal, your God, am a jealous God. Jealous. And then we're threatened, and our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren are all threatened. And for a terrible moment, we sense the inwardness of divine jealousy. God feels that the beloved people, the people at the core of the divine plan, the transmitter of the divine line, so to say, are turning away, turning to other gods, to the idols of ancient religions, or to the idols of today, wealth, pleasure, status, security, etc. Torah describes it as a torment for God. Love is always frightening. The joys of love always, always entail the risk of pain. And perhaps not even God escapes it. If, if we look at last week's Haftorah reading, we find pages from the tragic prophet Hosea. The rabbis say that Hosea asked God why he was sometimes so hard on the Jewish people. Why do you punish them so severely, he asks. Well, God said, I'll answer your question, but it will be very hard, very hard for you to experience the answer. And so, it was ordained that Hosea love and marry a woman who would betray him many times. He felt monstrous pains of jealousy. He sent her away. He sent their children away. But finally, finally, they did love one another, Hosea and his wife and their children, and they got back together and got through it. Hosea couldn't leave. And God said to him, God sent to, said to him, see, Hosea, that's how it is with me. I love this people. They hurt me and I try to cast them off. They betray me and I suffer. But how can I cast them off when I love them so much? We've been through so much together. How can I give you up, my people? How can I hand you over? It was I who fed you in the wilderness. My compassion rises, I will heal them. In some ways, God in Israel, and by extension, God in all the world, are like lovers who separate and, having separated, come together again 
and all is well. For a wounds of exile, terrifying separations, betrayal and abandonment, but the consolation is all will be well again. But please don't, please don't cite this example if you know someone who is abused in their marriage, please don't. Every finite word is imperfect. Every finite word can be abused between the lines for a ones of that too. But what do we make of the repeat, repeated prophecy, repeated over and over, exile now, we've betrayed God. Loneliness now, and we deserve it. But one day, the end of exile, joy and return. Ha! Tell those who died in the Holocaust about the return. Tell the victims of all those inquisitions, all those expulsions, about the return in the distant future. Dear God, those people might have said, we're, di we're dying now, we're dying here in this unredeemed world. The promised redemption will come to others, but that won't console us. But Torah speaks to us as if the whole story were really literally our story. It's as if each one of us tasted the bitterness of the exiles that ended long ago, as if each one of us will taste the joys that are coming, the end of all exile for all the world. The image of joy that consoles us across centuries, the vision of the beloved, the shining face of our beloved, is evoked in the part of our portion which, unfortunately for my poor self, is reserved for next week. You know the lines, I mean, the three lines, we're always saying them. We say them to our children, to one another, to the sick. Even now, if we read them, God's face will for an instant shine, shine for us, dispelling the pain of the past, all the jealousy, the torment, the cruel ordeals. I'll say them in English and imagine Rabbi Dana and my old friend Cantor Grossman and Cantor Fetter from my childhood and all my other amazing voices chanting Hebrew in the background, I'll imagine that and simply read in English and end. May the eternal bless you and keep you. May the face of the eternal shine on you and be gracious to you. May the face of the eternal rise toward you and bring you peace. See, the face that approaches shines and rises toward us make sense of all our disappointments, all our suffering. We just need to be ready to see it. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, your, your incredible words make me think about how Abraham Joshua Heschel says, the whole Bible is not humanity's search for God, but God's search for humanity. Thank you so very much. And so uh, um, we think about that day when we feel as if we are one with God and we are able in um, our fullness to be able to um, heal the brokenness in this world. Elena Le Chabert is at the top of page 282. Um, please rise and body your spirit. Alenu le shabeak la adon ha kol la teit kedula le otse ebreshit shehu no te shamaim vayoset haaretz umo shavye karo va shamaim mima al ushchinat uzo begov he meromim hu eloheinu enod. Ba'anach nu korim, 
ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו ושמו we remain standing as we think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us those who died at this season in years past and those whom we've drawn into our hearts with our own we're remembering the month that has passed louise leader wife of allen of blessed memory mother of david and jonathan mother-in-law of susan and bonnie grandmother of Tirza, Sharon, Dana, grandmother-in-law of Matthew, and great-grandmother to Ziva. And we are remembering Jonathan Sugarman, husband of Therese, father of Maya, brother of Erwin, and Alan and Stanley. And uh, I do take this moment to just let you know that next um, Shabbat will be um, uh, commemorating those who have died from gun violence and also working towards creating a world where gun violence is lessened. So we think about those communities um, uh, where there are those injured and killed by gun violence in Clarksdale, Clarksdale Mississippi and Texarkana, Texas this week. And uh, the communities that we name are just the ones with mass gun violence. That doesn't speak to um, the uh, just individual acts. We are also remembering these loved ones whose yard site falls at this time. Janet Atlas, Muriel, M Muriel Bellier, Herman Blau, Edward Kamner, Harry Davis, father of Mary Ellen Buchanan, Jerome Farber, Faber, Richard Fletcher, Marjorie Gamble, Albert Green, Genya Grobman, Thomas Hiller, Sam Cagle, Evelyn Kay, Maria Kisilev, Jill Kremen, Jack Landau, Robert Leslie, Ruth Levinson, Shirley Long, Stanley Marcus, Lois Meltzer, David Meltzer, Shulamit Neubauer, William Pollan, Florence Amster, Julia Schack, Rachel Schickiar, Sybil Stedman, Ilsa Stern, Barbara Tabor, Charlotte Thalheimer, Doris Tyndall, Rose Waldman, and anyone that you'd like to add? And online, um, please feel free to add in your um, chat as we continue with the Mourner's Kaddish 294. Yikadal the Shemei Rabbah. Vialma divra chirute viam leek malkute, Bechaye chon of Yomechon, Uvchaye de call Beit Yisrael, Bagala uvisman kari viamru, Amen. Yehe shme raba mivarak leolam alme almaya, Yip barak vi yishtabak vi yip paar vi yit romam vi yit nase, vi yit hadar vi yitale vi yitalal shme de kudashab rechu. Le Ela mean call Birchata Vishirata, Tush Birchata Vinechamata, Damiran Bialma Vimru Amen, Yehe Shlama Rabba mean Shemaya, Bechaim Alenu Vial call Yisrael Vimru Amen, O Se Shalom Vimromav, Hu Ya Ase Shalom, Alenu Vial call Yisrael Vial call Yoshve Tevel Vimru Amen. Zikronam Libracha, may their memories forever be a blessing. And I uh, will keep you standing for just one more moment as I run, or as Rabbi Dana runs to get uh, the Kiddush and Motzi. I do believe there's um, bagels, uh, and I am so happy to announce that I think we said beginning July 1, but we'll make sure to confirm that. We're going back to potlucks after. Uh, 
after yeah yeah i and so someone let Kay crane know we will be expecting soup <laughs> and, uh, we join together in our kiddish baruch atadonai eloheinu melech olam borei peri hagafen l'chaim and i think we're small enough and but if you feel comfortable There we go. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Ruchat Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Amotzi Lechem in Haaretz Beteyavon I, I was huge thank you to yes. Dan and to everyone else who participated, especially Jamie and Ronnie. We can show our love to Ronnie by returning our prayer books. Amen. I was going to say either Adon Olam or Ein Kelohenu, considering the Divrei Torah today. Does anybody have a preference? Adon Olam, Ein Kelohenu? Adon Olam? Adon Olam, Asher Malach, Beterim Kol. It's 321. The Etnasa, the <laughs> Beli tachalin, velo haoz mehamisra adon olam. Next verse, vehu eli, vechai goali, vetsor kevli vetsara adon olam. Vehu nisi, umanosli, menat kosi beyom ekra adon olam. Adon olam, masher malach, beterem kol. Last verse. Bring it home. I don't know. I'm a share my luck. And there I'm cold. Good to hear you. Right. It's not so. I'm so cold. 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 Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And thank you so much, Dan. That was awesome. Pretend to the fastest in the world.